Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Inks and I'm from IJS Electronics and today we're going to be checking out, or well, not checking out, we're going to be continuing with the e and Easy E4 controller. We're going to be checking out how the analog inputs works. More specifically is analog input 0 to 10 volts. That's what we're doing today, we're going to look at a bit about the wiring, jump on the laptop, see how we can uh, read and understand the data, where the data is stored and blah 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 and things like that. So uh, yeah, and uh, so yeah, and uh, do some testing and then and, and, uh, sort of give you a good idea how to do some form of fault finding if you do have the problems with it. I've been playing quite a bit with the uh, Ethernet Easy E4, and I gotta admit, it's a good controller. It's very well built. It's got very very fancy functionalities, and it it, it is uh, once you get your head around it, like with any software with any manufacturer that have worked so far. At the beginning, it's always hard, but once you get your head around it, you're fine. So that's what we're doing today. So uh, all the videos and uh, are not the other videos. This video is going to go part of the Eton's uh, easy uh, uh, what what they called uh, the, the what's it called playlist. And uh, do check out those videos. We already done for it. So without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> So uh, as usual, let's quickly check out how the wiring works. So uh, as my, I'm going to be using this uh, protest meter, which is a fluke protest meter. And unfortunately, my, uh, for this protest meter cannot generate me a 0 to 10 volt. So I had to improvise. So I'm going to be using the help of Siemens uh, analog uh, card. Where I'm going to be sending in a uh, 4 milliamp, as you can see down there, it's 4 to 20 milliamps. This guy will be converting it into a 0 to 10 volts, and we will be sending that 0 to 10 volts to this controller. Imagine this as our, a, or well, actually not this, but uh, this guy in here as our, uh, some form of a sensor that is sending back a uh, 0 to 10 volts. In our case, it's going to be 4 to, 10 milli 4 to 20 milliamps. So uh, it's very, so wiring is very simple. You use the third, uh, the, the second zero right here. That will be your zero point, which is going to be coming from your uh, uh, transmitter, whichever you are using, or pressure sensor, or uh, wow, just, there's many, and they're all just jumped out of my head. So any type of sensor that uh, processes zero to ten volts, uh, it can send you the, that information back to your controller or to these channels I five, six, seven, and eight. So zero goes to here. And obviously, I'm sending the plus, which the plus side goes to five. And that's it, and the wiring is pretty much done. So the only thing is what is interesting about this control, there's no way of monitoring your, uh, at least I can't find it anywhere where you can possibly monitor. So unless I'm missing something, there is no way to see it unless you have function blocks into it. We're gonna get Jack in the end of the video into it. So uh, yeah, so uh, what we're gonna do now is, this is our meter, I'm gonna leave it here like that, with that light, without the light, trying to get out of it or something like that. Anyway, so uh, what we're gonna do, we're gonna jump into the laptop now and uh, uh, quickly show you around uh, how to uh, read and more or less identify if you have any issues because this, again, this video is all about uh, form fine. If you do have any problems with your analogs, uh, I'll show you how to identify and we create like a simple, sample little small program. Then we can see how things work. So let's get to it. There we are. So uh, let's load up Easy is Soft 7. Come on, this time what we're going to do, we're going to uh, connect to the PLC directly. This is my interface from the last video. So if you haven't watched the last video, have you got to this point, do check out the last video. So let's jump online. So I haven't done that. We're going to go into the program and we're going to get pump the program out of the controller. So I haven't done that. As you can see, let me just here put this down to uh, the zero. As you can see in this window, once you're online, you can more or less monitor all your IOs, including the analogs. And as you can see, see there, if I go up and down, yes, the values are appearing. And as you can see, I5 came on as well. Uh, it under certain conditions, I think I'm not, I'm not sure what voltage it comes on. I think it's 15 volts. It comes on as well. So. So yeah, don't be alarmed, because here we go, so uh, here we go, my 20 milliamps will be 10 volts, and more or less it gives us a, it gives us a number of 4084. So if you want to find out the range, the quickest way, at least I, quickest way to find out, I just jump into simulation. So if I go into simulation, and uh, press play, 
Once I press play, as you can see down there in the simulation window, you have a lot of things you can simulate, including the analogs. And it comes out with like a little uh, ranger in here. And it sort of tells you a, uh, I, uh, IA1. It, it will be your input I5. So more as you can see where the inputs are. And this slider in here where you can play around with it. So uh, to do your uh, to do your testing, as you can see, there is our range. Our range is a zero to four thousand and ninety-five. So that will be our range for that analog input, which is zero to ten volts. So if you go back into a uh, no, we don't want to go to programming. No communications. We want to be in programming. So once you're in programming, to more or less interact with your analog signal. And there's a lot of because I was I was trying to come up with some formal program for it, but then I thought, oh. It's just too much for it, so too much you can do with it, and then it will be just not fair. So I just choose a basic comparator. So we're just going to basically compare the analog input 1 with analog input 2. So analog input 2 is my memory word, which is, again, this is just, just to uh, uh, allow for me to compile the program successfully. So I added those things. So the reason I did that, because I want to show you a little bit in a controller in a minute, where you can as well see those values in there. So, uh, so yeah, so if you are on the... Uh, where is the? Uh, if you go into a, not the project, and it's communications. There we are. A press play, and as you can see, those files as well appearing on there under the AI one. So there we go. So they are there as well. And again, you can do all sorts of uh, things with it. So having done that, that's pretty much giving you an idea where to a uh, uh, look for your analog values and see if those values are exactly what they need to be if you are doing some form of fault finding. So uh, for that, for the computer part, for the from the laptop part, of it, it, it will do. And usually these values will be going through for, through through some form of function blocks. So they should be under uh, the menu in program. So you should be able to find them in there as well. So we're going to check that out now. And here we are, we are back to uh, our uh, screen. So there's our uh, uh, meter in here, which at the moment sits on 7.9 uh, milliamps. In our case, it's, it's again converting to volts. So let's click OK. And if you want to find out, the best way to find out your, your analog values or what they're doing is go into parameters. And there should be other, uh, as you can see, this is my function block in there. So going in there, as you can see, I can see my I1. It's showing that value in there, jumping around, and so there we go. And those values, you are able to read them in there as well. Again, they usually will be part of some form of, uh, uh, under some form of function blocks. So on that, ladies and gentlemen, is analog input from the actual controller itself. There's obviously, your add-on cards can do, you can have analog input, analog outputs with uh, milliamps and things like that. As we get those cards, we can review them. I'll see how they work in the future as I get them. At the moment, I don't have them. So uh, once I get them, we'll play around with it once we do. So uh, so yeah, and that'll do for this video. So uh, in the next video, we're actually going to look into a upgrading the firmware for this guy. So I'm quite keen to see how easy it is to do that. So uh, I've been checking out the, the software already. It looks fairly simple, uh, actually, which, which I do like. As I haven't seen other other manufacturers do that so but it's very keen to figure out how that works so yeah that will do ladies and gentlemen for this video hope you enjoy it hope it helps you out and gives you a good head start so again this is not the programming video it's all about getting you to understand how those analog values are working inside the e-tone uh, controller so yeah that'll do so thank you very much for watching if you like the video don't forget to smash that like subscribe if you like what we're doing here and i'll see you in the next video